Today on Iconic Tactics, we are taking a look at one of the all-time greats, Brian Clough. Derby County manager, Nottingham Forest manager, Leeds United manager for 44 days, but today we're going to concentrate on the 4-4-2 that he kind of had at Nottingham Forest. They won promotion from division, the old Division 2, which is now the Championship, went straight up into the Premier League, then called Division 1, won the league title in their first season, and then went on to win two European Cups in a row. Football at its most simple and beautiful best. Tactics links down in the description below. I hope you like the little spoiler at the start. I'm going to be using this tactic and this philosophy very, very soon as I'm starting a new Let's Play on the channel called I Believe in Miracles with Nottingham Forest. All right, let's get into it. Smash a like on today's video for me. Muchly appreciated. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Subscribe if you want to see that Let's Play and more Iconic Tactics. And as always, let me know down in the comments which Iconic Tactic you would like to see next. And next week, it is Gasparini's Atalanta. Three, four, one, two. All right, guys, let's get into today's Iconic Tactic. All right, guys, so here we are. It's a 4-4-2. Now, Brian Clough believed in simplicity. Lots of rest and recovery. They were so good. His assistant manager, Peter Taylor, was so good at recruitment. And it's a very simple, basic 4-4-2 that you should be able to plug in in any kind of standard, any league. It's not too attacking. You could tweak a few things as well if you need to go defensive. They did a quite a good defensive job in the second leg against um, Liverpool in the European Cup in the first round. Um, that they managed to get through, did a bit of a job on them in the second leg, but yeah, it gives you, but yeah, it gives you the opportunity to be quite flexible. Now we are going to focus on a few things in this tactic: two very hard, solid central defenders and midfielders. Um, left hand side is where we get our joy. We're using Inter Milan today, um, just basically because of the players that they have available in their squad and how it fits how I want the team to play. On the left hand side, they had that little fat guy who Brian Clough always used to call him, John Roberts, an absolute superstar. He actually scored the one, I think it was the winning goal against Hamburg to lift their second successive European Cup. So we're going to use Inter Milan. We're going to go through the instructions now. And as I said, tactics links down below, head you over to FM Scout. Right, so. Goalkeeper, Peter Shilton, we've got, it's just a goalkeeper on defend. I don't think there was sort of like the sweeper keeper was kind of a thing during sort of like the late 70s. I've watched a lot of Nottingham Forest content over the last few weeks. And to be fair, to keep things simple, as I said, Brian Clough believed in simplicity. Defenders do the jobs, goalkeepers do the job, midfielders do the jobs, strikers go score the goals. It was as simple as that. So with goalkeeper, we've just got him on goalkeeper. Now, Right-hand side was spicing it up a little bit. This was Viv Anderson. I've put him as a complete wing-back on support, mainly because, number one, he does get forward a lot. He scored a few, a fair few goals. He was often always, not always, but often getting into these areas here with shots on goal. Now, I thought, a complete wing-back, I've just got it on support so he doesn't venture forward and do it constantly. He doesn't have a higher starting position. He's still going to help his defenders out. But I just thought that might just free him up a little bit to get into these areas. He often gets round the right-hand side as well. A um, little bit of a backup to the right midfielder. So, yeah, we've, we've spiced it up for the Brian Clough one. Complete win-back on support. Right, two central defenders. I think the, one, the two that stand out is Kenny Burns or Kenneth as Brian Clough used to call him, and the other one was Larry Lloyd. Two big, in particular, Burns. You need to go check out I Believe in Miracles, by the way, a documentary based on this side. He was an absolute hooligan, so we've put two no-nonsense defenders on defend. Tackle harder, Mark Titer. Left-hand side, pretty of a simple role. I think that was because of what they had in what he had in front of him in terms of John Robertson, one of the probably the world's best players at the time, wasn't great defensively, wasn't great with his fitness, so they needed someone solid, and I think it balances the, balances the team up really well. So we've just gone with a fullback on support. This was all uh, sometimes a, a guy called Barrett, who I think has got a big goal in the European Cup run. I think it may have been in the second leg against Cologne off the top of May. It could have even been Liverpool in the first leg. I can't remember. He scored a goal, venturing forward. And the joke was always that Brian Clough was furious that he'd ventured forward. I think it was actually I think it was actually from a Woodcock knockdown. So Barrett and also Frank Clark, the guy uh, who went on to manage Nottingham Forest in the sort of like the early 90s. He's at left back into the middle of the midfield. Now, this was the most tricky one to do. There was a lot of variation. He did actually have a really good squad and a lot of players could do different roles. So sometimes Archie Gemmel would play out on this left-hand side. 
Um, he was generally a left footer. Um, he would often play in central midfield as well. So his rule was a little bit different. He would sort of like come into these areas. Trevor Francis, who scored the winning goal, first million, one million pound player. The player that scored the goal in the first final against Malmo. He was more of a centre forward. He was actually a centre forward playing out wide. So you'd maybe class him as a winger. Um, the third one was Martin O'Neill, the Leicester, uh, North, uh, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland Celtic manager. Now, I've decided to choose him for this role. Wide midfielder, I just think it gives us a little bit of better balance in the side. So we're going with Martin O'Neill on this right-hand side. Wing, swing, wide midfielder on support with the instruction of get further forward. Now, there's an interesting clip in the documentaries that it talks about when Ron Robertson's putting balls into the box, he needs to make sure that he is in at the back post. If he's not in at the back post, he's going to get a telling off. So I've just put, I put it on support because he was quite defensively solid was Martin O'Neill. Looked like he worked extremely hard for the team, but I've just got further forward on just so when the ball is on the other side, it maybe just gives that match engine a little bit of a trigger for him to get into that back post. And we've seen it in the match engine, which is good. In the mid midfield, we've got a ball winning defender. This is sort of like the John McGovern role. Would very rarely, would often obviously get told off as well by the manager, Brian Clough and Peter Taylor for venturing too far forward. So we've just no personal instructions um, on duty of defend as well. And then the box-to-box -box role, we're going with Ian Boyer. He actually could play at left back. He's got a fair few goals, actually. Coming in from head and from knockdowns, he was quite good in the air, quite a big lad. He is, a I would call it a classic box-to-box -box midfielder, very aggressive um, no player instructions on that one as well. Um, but yeah, that's the middle two. Very basic, very solid. But with the license of Boyer getting into the middle to score some knockdowns from crosses, etc. Left-hand side, John Robertson. We have gone with a winger on attack now. Robertson was brilliant left foot and right foot. He would cut in, I think, his goal against Hamburg. He played a 1-2, I think, with Gary Bertels, who's my advance forward. Played a 1-2 with him, came into his right foot and scored a lovely goal into the bottom corner. However, we're looking, ideally, what he was so good at was no real pace, but what he did was beat his man, a little bit of body movement, get to the byline and dink balls, clip balls into the far post, into the box for knockdowns, people at the back stick. So I thought... I didn't really want him to be doing this too much. I think an inverted winger would naturally send him a little bit into inside a little bit too much. You will still get it. You still get your wingers cutting in every so often, hitting with the opposite foot. But I think John Robertson, a winger on attack. I've put winger on attack, even though he wasn't great at sort of like, he wasn't very quick, but he was excellent at beating a man. I just want him to get to the by line and that's what the attack duty kind of gives us. So there he is, superstar John Robertson. And then up front, I've kind of played with it. I did have, so they were quite lucky up front. Obviously, Trevor Francis could play up front, even though he was a bit used of a bit part player up there. John O'Hare, Peter With, Gary Mills, ex-York City manager, legend, played, I think, in the second final. Gary Bertels, um, who's sort of like been the Sky Sports um, Football League pundit. We've also had... Um, Tony Woodcock as well. So we're going to go with Woodcock and Bertels. I think those were the two that we started in the final. O'Hare as well, if I haven't mentioned. But we're going to go with Woodcock now. Bits that I've seen with him, even though he was a big guy, and you imagine a lot of the players during this era, the number of the strikers, it was sometimes often like two number nines up there, two guys that were really physical, could work channels, had to do a little bit of everything. And I've used the target forward a little bit, and then I thought that was a little bit unfair on Tony Woodcock because he was excellent with his feet. So we've gone with a complete... Full, complete full bank, complete forward on attack. And I think that just gives us the variation because he was excellent with his back to goal, excellent setting up players, worked extremely hard, worked the channels, and I think that suits it. And then on the left-hand side, we've gone with Gary Bertels, advanced forward, moving into channels. I think it kind of strikes a good balance as well in terms of balls, bodies in the box because we're going to get crosses in from that left-hand side as well. So it makes sense to have two out-and-out -out strikers up there. Okay, Team instructions, we've got positive mentality. He was always a, not a, I think he was definitely ahead of his time in terms of how he wanted his teams to play. So we've gone with positive mentality. I think we can do that a little bit as well because of the defensive structure we've got with the wide midfielder, a defensive sort of like fullback and a ball winning midfielder in there. I think we can do positive, no problem. He also wanted to dominate the ball. He thought teams, there was a quote of him, when a team comes to the city ground and having more possession, he called that sacrilege at the city ground so we want to dominate the ball a little bit in possession wide attacking width just so we can open it out and give Robertson that opportunity they wanted Robertson to get 1v1s as much as possible no passing to space we don't really need to do that 
Focus, play, down the left, massive the ball. It was defenders, get the ball to midfielders. Can we get it out to the fat guy on the left-hand side, John Roberts said. So that's what we've gone with. Passing directness, we've gone with just slightly shorter. Obviously, the pitches were terrible. He wanted the ball on the ground. And one of, and one of his favourite quotes was, if, if God wanted us to play football in the sky, he would have put grass up there. So even though you would imagine there was a lot of long balls in sort of like the 70s and 80s, especially with two, front, uh, two, two strikers, two physical strikers, we've just gone slightly short and that will help us dominate the ball a little bit and get those possession stats up. Higher tempo, we, you could argue that could be higher if you wanted to suit the match engine a little bit more. You could probably go with that. Time wasting, never. That depended on the scenario. They were very good at getting over the line and getting the job done. So by all means, when you're in this tactic, use things like never time wasting, dropping it down to defensive, etc. Um, floating crosses, important. I'm looking for that cross into the far stick. We're looking for knockdowns as well. Um, looking for the big guy, the bite, the back stick. Robertson's balls were often just aloft into the penalty area and getting the two front, the two strikers to sort of like attack it. Hit crosses early, very important. We want as many crosses in the penalty area as we possibly can. No other instructions. There wasn't a run at defence. You could argue that Robertson does that, but with the role that he's got, it's not necessary. Creative freedom was another one. Even though he wanted his players to express themselves and enjoy it, they were quite disciplined and made sure, number one, that it worked extremely hard. So I've just taken that off. In transition, we've gone for a counter press and a counter. There's a lot to sort of like say, does that happen? But we've gone with it. I think it's more just to suit the match engine, especially the counter press and the, and the regroup. They were very attacking on the front foot. It was always talking about working hard on the other side. So I thought a counter press would kind of maybe suit it. Counter attacking, yes, get the ball out to the left hand side as quickly as possible. In um, with the goalkeepers in possession as well, we'll just get him to distribute it, roll it out. You'd often see go up Shilton rolling it out to the centre half, so we'd then play simple passes into midfield. Out of possession, we've gone for a higher line and standard line of engagement. Now, if you're wanting to really dive into FM, and I think when I do my Let's Play series, I'm going to move this up to higher and higher, but we've just gone for a standard line of engagement just to suit more of what the football was at the time. There wasn't necessarily high presses. There was initial sort of like press to get the ball back, a bit of a counter press, I suppose, but teams would often drop into a mid block. Um, but we've gone with a higher line just to start with and stand just once again to help us squeeze up the pitch and hopefully retain possession of the ball and get the ball back a little bit quicker. Use tighter marking, everything in there, the middle two midfielders, two centre half, very defensive, very aggressive. Um, trigger press more often and obviously it's 1970s and 1980s so get stuck in all right there is the tactic hope you enjoy it we're gonna going to move on to the match and just see a few little clips um let me know your thoughts downloading it as i said i'm using this in my le new let's play series which is starting very very soon right guys let's dive in to the match engine and see how this looks Okay, first little highlight actually comes in a defeat against Lazio. Immobile absolutely ripped us to shreds here. But what we're going to show you is the movement of O'Neill, making sure O'Neill, the, the wide midfielder, obviously Perisic, Robertson, just the combination between the two. Perisic down his left-hand side, working it, getting a little bit of an underlap in there. And then we're in, and it's across to the back stick. And there is your wide midfielder on support. You would maybe expect him to be a little bit more defensively. But because we've got that instruction to get more forward, he's getting in at the back stick. A lot of crosses were aimed and targeted at the back stick. Okay, the next little highlight has a little bit of sort of like the European Cup winning goal that Robertson scored against Hamburg. Go check it out after the video. He does end up scoring from the edge of the area in it. But the combination between Gary Bertels and himself, there is Gary Bertels, the Lataro Martinez. And here is Perisic. Perisic, the Robertson role, does once again. We said I was a bit worried about what role to give it and will he ever cut in. And this is a perfect example, even though he's a winger on attack, cutting in onto his right foot. So Barella, box-to-box -box midfielder, and then the link-up play between the two strikers. It's, it does fit a little bit. All we needed here for the goal to be like identical, it would have been a little layoff here to Robertson, who then took it into sort of like the D and then scoring. But the link-up play really good. Robertson getting really high. Look at him, winger on attack, getting in into really good central areas. And then the last one is a nearly a carbon copy 
of the goal that John Robertson scored in the semi-final against Cologne. They were 2-0 down. This was to put them 3 up. He never scored headers and he managed to get in at the back stick. And a little bit for you and a little bit for you football nerds as well. John Robertson actually lost his brother and his sister-in-law who died in a car crash the day before of this game. And he decided he could have gone home, back up to Scotland, but he decided to play in this game and he scored one of the greatest ever goals, coming from 2-0 down and scoring a goal like this. So once again, because he's on attack, we're asking him, I think, to get in at that back stick when we can. He did score goals at the back stick. A lot of them were not from headers. I think he probably only scored one or two headers during his career. But once again, it's quite simplest, sim simplistic. Is that a word? We're going to say it's a word. Um, get in, Dumfries, O'Neill, and crosses into the box. We're asking him to cross. So I think if you're going to play with this tactic, your wingers need to be good at crossing the ball, and you need two strikers who are going to attack it and are good in the air. Clough and Taylor, Taylor in particular, the assistant manager, was so good at, at just generally finding players and think of the damage Manchester United have done over the years by not signing players to suit how they want to play. This is a perfect example of how to buy and recruit for your team. And here it goes, Dumfries in and there he is, absolutely darting. Now, John Robertson's was a diving header, but the initial run is the same, a really keen, aggressive run to get across the fullback to score the goal. So we've managed to recreate in the opening maybe six, seven games of the season. We actually beat uh, Juventus there, so we, we got back from that Lazio defeat early on. We've actually managed to recreate two of John Robertson's most famous goals for the club. All right, that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. This, this has reignited my love i've watched the documentaries loads and loads of times obviously a big fan of like brian clough and how he worked and such an interesting intriguing character i recommend you to go watch i believe in miracles which is available on bt there is also a documentary made by itv on youtube there is also a documentary made by a guy called ballon b-a-l-o-n english really good football channel you'll end up getting lost down a rabbit hole on his channel with watching stuff he's done a brian clough one as well i i encourage all you guys that are a little bit younger than, to, younger than me that have maybe heard of Brian Clough, go watch it. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this 442 and how to recruit in the next Let's Play on the channel, which is coming very soon. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that kind of thing. And we'll see you next week. Atalanta's 3412 with Gasparini. Should be good. Okay, guys, take care. See you later.